Welcome to The Pleasure in the Glass. Our goal here is to help you discover from a simple non-technical taste point of view what a winemaker puts in to a bottle and a glass of wine. Every well-made wine in the world, guaranteed, with the exception of none, there's three things you can taste. There's actually four, but for right now we're going to stick to three. The first is ripe fruit, which you taste as flavors. The second one is acidity, which you taste as a tartness. And the third is a texture, like milk is thick, water is thin. What a winemaker does is create a harmony, a dance, an interaction between these three elements. And knowing that they work mm, 60, 70, 80 plus hours a week, they're coming from a labor of love. So we want to get you that love in every sip of wine. So we're going to play a little game with that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to taste a wine three different ways. So I'm going to show you how to do this, and you can do it on your own at home. So here we go. Most people, when it comes to wine, what they do is they take a very simple, straightforward sip. I will demonstrate how I've seen many of my friends drink wine. And they'll keep talking. That will be most of their experience of wine. What we're going to offer you here is a couple of different ideas. So first thing is going to be to chew the wine like food. So the idea here is different taste buds are located on different parts of the tongue. The sweet taste buds are located on the front tip, the sour on the sides, the saltier on the middle and the sides, and the bitter in the back. And they take different time periods to react. So sweet reacts immediately. Sour takes about a second to a second and a half. Salty takes two to two and a half seconds, and bitter can take up to four seconds. So great experiments to do that can really help you understand this is take a little bit of sugar, put it on the back of your tongue, and you won't taste the sweetness in your mouth till the saliva brings it to the front tip. Another great thing is take some salt and put the salt on the front tip. You'll see you won't taste the saltiness till the saliva brings it back and a little time has passed. My favorite experiment is to take a piece of citrus fruit, ideally a nice sweet orange, peel the, off, the outside off, leave the white on, bite right into that white, and what you'll see is the sweetness from the pulp will fill your mouth, then there'll be this nice long time delay, and then what you get is that bitterness fills the mouth. So different taste buds take different time periods to react. So I'm gonna give you a demo now on chewing wine like food, at least four seconds over the front, sides, middle, and back of palate. Looks like this. and swallow away. So that's the piece we want to really want to grab here. From that point of view, we want to look at the three factors. Ripe fruit, which you taste as flavors, acidity, which you taste as a tartness, and a texture. Milk is thick, water is thin. So tasting this way, where you get at least four seconds to enjoy the wine, experience the wine in your mouth, notice now how the fruit, the acidity, and the texture, the flavor, the acidity, and the texture, interact. See how they start to play. See if you notice a difference from that first taste and if it starts to last a little longer. That's the second way. The third way to taste, imagine you have a cold. No matter how long you chew the food, you will not get the distinctive flavors that are in the food to really show up in your experience. Whether it's chicken, fish, veal, or tofu, you will not get the unique distinctive flavors. So air coming through this cavity while the fluid is exposed, or the food is exposed to your taste buds, will allow those flavors to burst and expand and express themselves. Here's a caricature-like demo for you. So, like that. Mm, you can tone it down about 10 octaves if you want to. But the idea is to get air in there while the fluid is exposed to your taste buds. Then stop, pause, and notice. The distinctiveness in the flavors now get a chance to linger out. And if you observe what you're experiencing, you'll see that there's much more going on. That the flavors are having much more of an opportunity to express themselves to show their different flavors and personality. What you've just learned, if you choose to taste this way, is an ability to discern one wine from another that makes the whole wine world that much bigger. 
and as a main doorway into the world of conscious wine. Welcome to The Pleasure in the Glass.